Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. So in this video, I'm going to touch on the consistency of these McGuire Ballistics uh, solid copper bullets that I got in uh, the other day. And I'm going to go over the consistency that I'm seeing in, uh, I measured so far, I just measured this one box of the 264 diameter, um, 125 grain. And I uh, want to go over that, and then we're going to hit the range and show some range footage and also check some groups on how these guys perform on target, right? And then hopefully we'll have a load identified fairly quickly uh, with these guys and can hit the range, not hit the range, but hit the deer woods and put them to use, see how they perform on game. So I measured this box. This is a 50 count box, and the numbers were pretty insane. I mean, it, it, you expect really good consistency out of a CNC turned uh, solid copper bullet, which is what these are. Um, you know, similar if you've seen like the hammer hammer line of bullets, uh, these are not, I mean, they're, they're pretty vastly different actually. I mean, the, the CNC uh, precision part, that's kind of where it ends. Um, the ridges, these, I guess, relief grooves or whatever you want to call this stuff right in here, vastly different on the hammer bullets uh, versus these. And so you'll definitely notice that right off the bat if you've shot the hammers before. Uh, these are not the same. Yeah, they're CNC turned, um, super precise and consistent uh, bullets. But yeah, so there you go. That's kind of how they compare in terms of the actual bullet itself, if you guys are familiar with the hammer. So here are the numbers. So I measured off 50 and the length, there was only half a thou difference in all 50. That's insane. Um, that is, that's the level of precision that you're going to get into when you start to talk about you know, these solid copper, you know, CNC turned, uh, CNC milled, projectile, solid copper, or whatever alloy um, they might might be made out of. This is the level of precision that you're talking about. So there's the length, uh, 1.297 to 1.2975. So half thou difference over 50 bullets. Um, and then the weight you see there, minimum 124, max 124.4. So four tenths of a grain. Uh, weight difference there. So pretty consistent, if you ask me, which is what you would expect on something uh, that is machined to these tolerances. Extremely precise, uh, well-made bullets. So that's it. Let's go hit the range. All right, guys. So getting ready to load these up. And one of the things you, you want to do if you're going down the path of uh, a bullet such as this, where there, there's no published load data uh, for this bullet, so you're basically on your own when you're trying to make this stuff up. And so you want to try to take in as much information as humanly possible when doing this and, and work up the loads, uh, you know, as safely as possible, right? Trying to identify, you know, potentially where you're going to start to see pressure signs um, because it, it is a unique situation right now. You know, reaching out to Sam and talking to him on the phone, right? He can't, he can't uh, necessarily tell me, hey, here's load data, right? Go use this X Y Z, right? I, and and he was very open about that. He was like, look, I'm not going to tell you, do this. He said, I can tell you what I do. He's like, but what I'm not going to do is tell you, you know, go follow this recipe because it's going to vary for everybody in every situation, right? Depending on your rifle and and all this stuff, right? So. Uh, which was very helpful. Like he did, he did tell me what he typically does, how he generally loads using these bullets, which, which was very helpful, right? Obviously with it being a solid copper bullet, we can go look at Barnes as a potential source of information to kind of get a better understanding of, you know, the powders that would be good, all you know, options to use, uh, some charge weight range, uh, charge weight ranges that we can look at and evaluate and see how it, it would, you know, potentially be used in our situation. 
And I will say these, even though this bullet and something like the Barnes, this is the 127 grain LRX, right? So you're talking about a 125 grain uh, McGuire Ballistics hollow point. And then this is the Barnes 127 grain LRX. Now there is just over a hundred thousandths difference in the overall length between this bullet and the McGuire Ballistics. So uh, that's something that will come into play when you go and try to figure out, okay, what's my jam point looking like in my, in my rifle, right? What, and so then how does that translate into how much of the bullet is down into the case, which eats into your case capacity, which will affect your pressures. And so you, it's not a direct uh, one for one, like, hey, because this is pretty close in, in weight, total weight, I can just go use the Barnes load data and load it exactly the same as what the manual says and I can be fine, right? It's not necessarily the case. Um, you know, there are just a lot of factors at play here. And so uh, what I will point out is I measured um, the jam point with the Barnes 127 LRX, the McGuire Ballistics 125 uh, grain hollow point, and then also the Hornady 140 grain interlock. So, so I went ahead and wrote those numbers down here. Okay, this is in my Kimber 84M Hunter. Um, for the 140 interlock, you're talking about 2.730. That's the jam point. If you'll remember in another video, uh, which actually I don't think I've published that video yet. I'm, I'm working on it. Um, doing a lot of 6.5 stuff here all at the same time. So I can't remember which one's going to come out first. Probably, probably this series will come out first. So... I'm working on some 140 grain interlock loads in a separate video and I'll load those to 2.7. That's at the, virtually at the base of the cantilever. So, you know, we're only jumping 30 thousandths um, with that particular bullet in my setup. And then the McGuire ballistics, you can see the jam point compared to the Barnes. That's a big difference, right? You're talking 130 thousandths difference in the, the jam point between the McGuire ballistics and the Barnes, we're, we're jamming it at 2.68 uh, is the jam point. So the, you know, you can just tell by that measurement alone, the Ojive, uh, I guess, shape, if you will, is just vastly different with how that, that bullet is being jammed into the rifling, right? So we just have to keep that in mind. Um, that's one of the reasons why I say you can't just go grab the Barnes load data and just start loading up and, you know, with whatever's in the manual and be perfectly fine because the jam point of this bullet is 20 thousandths shorter than any cartridge overall length that Barnes lists in their manual, right? They load to 2.7 when you're talking about a similar uh, similar grain bullet. So anything down to like their 115s, their 115s even up to their 140s uh, in that range, their, their shortest is 2.7. So that's 20 thousandths over where we even jam into the rifling. So we're gonna be seating significantly shorter than their shortest overall length. Right. We're going to be down. I'm probably going to run this at 2.65. So we're talking 50,000 shorter than their shortest overall length that they run in their manual. So that's why, you know, you definitely don't want to start near the high end of the charge weight range. Now I'm starting uh, definitely above their minimum. Um, I'm going to start at 37.8 and this could change, right? Once I dump some powder, and feel how the bullets are seating, right? Having to seat them this deeply, um, you know, that may change. That could very well change. And I'm, I'm, what I'm gonna start off doing is sort of a velocity test and check for signs of pressure. So I'm only gonna load 10 uh, right off the bat and go from there. I'll drop, uh, what I'll do is probably drop this first charge and uh, maybe go seat the bullet and see how it, how it feels in terms of if there's any compression or anything like that, because again, we are seating this 50 thousandths 
deeper than any of the the uh, the lows that that Barnes lists. So that's obviously going to change your case fill, your compression point, all of that stuff changes now. So you just have to keep that in mind. But I'm going to do that. That's sort of the plan. I'll be running H4350. Uh, it's not the best velocity option for uh, in the Barnes load data. It's actually one of the slower options that they have listed, but I'm not necessarily looking for absolute maximum velocity in this cartridge for this bullet. You know, it, it's uh, what I want to do is use a very, very good 6.5 Creedmoor option in terms of a powder choice, right? This is just a universal, universally good option in the 6.5 Creedmoor that a lot of people, if they can get their hands on it, this is what they're gonna use. So that's why I kinda wanna go down that route. Use that, it's it's an extremely good powder uh, in this cartridge. So, and we're using my brand new, focus, focus, Lapua, yeah buddy. This is the, uh, the brand new stuff I just picked up, the small rifle primer and undersized flash hole brass and I'm using CCI 450s uh, as the primer. So, all right, let me dump some charges. I gotta get this stuff, gotta get the powder in the hopper, dump a few charges. I'm gonna go seat this bullet and then we'll see what that looks like, so. Thanks. All right, so I know you can't really see down in the case that well. This is that 37.8 grain charge, but it's, it's sort of just above, uh, right around the point where you see the discoloration, the change from the annealing process. Um, right where that begins, that's essentially where the powder is, slightly above that. So just to kind of give you an idea of case fill with that 37.8 grain charge. Get in our press here. I'm trying to do this one-handed, so this is not going to be the easiest thing. There we go. Okay, we did get a little bit of resistance. I just know from um, from using this in the Hornady overall length gauge, that's way too long. I did get a little bit of resistance. Now, this all of this brass, you know, I run this stuff through the Ellie Wilson, uh, that expanding mandrel die, uh, just to round out the case mouse, and then I chamfer and deburr. Uh, the case mouth as well so and that that results in some fairly light neck tension um i can measure it but i mean it's still uh, i have no issues running that level of neck tension uh in my setup uh, even with or at least in any of the loads that i've tested i've been doing that process for a long time in the 6.5 and i think i'm running like one and a half one and a half thousandths of neck tension maybe Something like two, something along those lines. I can't remember what it is, but I know this is still too long. Um, so stand by. You get to look at my feet for free. I'm not even charging you. I'm losing money on that deal. 2.771. So we're still way long. Let's make another. We're going to go down to rope. Revolutions on the uh, micro just seating stem, so that will drop us a hundred thousandths, it's 50 per uh, revolution. So that put us at 2.672. Yeah, and I want to go another 10, 20, I'm going to go another 22 down. Yep, 2.650, okay. That, all right, so 2.650, so pretty much all I did was just obviously make an adjustment. You can see on here, which you guys probably can't see because of the surface rust, but the, you do have these uh, markings on here to indicate, you know, each revolution is, is 50 thousandths, 50 thousandths, and there's lines on here to indicate a thousandth every every time you you know you turn and you can line it up so i just came down uh and until i seated 
the bullet at my desired overall length. Now, Sam does say to use uh, VLD style seating stems, which I do have a couple of different options in the uh, 6.5, you know, the, the, the 6.5 millimeter uh, seating stem for, uh, for this Hornady die. I need to pull it out just to make sure I'm using the one that's, that fits it the best. Um, I did leave a little bit of a, I guess a contact, you know, just sort of to let you know where that seating stem made contact on the bullet. But yeah, that's it. Uh, shaking it, I mean, there's still plenty of room, uh, it sounds like, in the case. So yeah, that's our first loaded round with the Maguire Ballistics. That thing looks sweet. So, so there we go. That's that 37.8 grain charge. I'm going to continue to go up in three tenths and just uh, see how everything seats. And if I run into uh, compression and all that, I'll, obviously I'll let you guys know um, in the next segment. So yeah, stand by. Hopefully seating goes smoothly, no issues. And then we'll just go straight out to the range and start to get some velocity data. All right, stay tuned. All right, so back from the range. I didn't get any range footage, and it was mostly because of how windy it was outside. I, I did try to film, went back, rewatched it. You can't, I mean, you could barely hear me talking on the video, it's so windy. Uh, plus, there were some guys doing some mag dumps uh, down on the long range side with some ARs, and I mean, they weren't hitting the steel. So I'm not exactly sure what they were shooting at, but yeah. So the video kind of was terrible, <clears throat> but this is the information gathered with the McGuire ballistics. Oh, the puppy's not happy. Yeah. So what I, what I ended up doing was using the Barnes load data for the 127 grain LRX. You can see it right there on the right. So I actually shot both of these. Uh, at the same time, getting velocity. Wait, what are you doing? He's, what are you doing back there? He's, so, what are you doing? Dogs hate going backwards. Um, so, so I shot both at the same time using the same charge weights and I was testing H4350. Now that is the uh, slowest option in terms of velocity that Barnes has load data for. And uh, so I knew the velocities weren't gonna be that great to begin with, probably weren't gonna reach the velocity that they had listed in their manual, which they show right here. So. Their minimum is 36.3 grains, their max is 40.4, and their velocities 25, 26, up to 27, 38. Now, if you look down here, you're like, well, you got up to 2751 with the Maguire Ballistics and 2754 with the 127 grain LRX. However, I had to go a 1.6 grains above their listed max charge to even replicate the top end velocity that they saw at 40.4 grains. I had to go all the way to 42. Um, not good, right? And I don't recommend that at all to anyone. Uh, went well above max and, hey, he's going nuts. Stop. Um, and so I started off, I, I went up to the 40.5 that you see right there. That was the initial test that I did. Uh, shot those first 10 velocities were, you know, were, were nice and kind of in the range where I thought they would be <clears throat> and no pressure signs whatsoever. That was between both, uh, between both bullets. And then, so I just decided to go five more beyond that. So I went 40.8 and then these down here, these additional five, I went back and, and shot those after the fact, this number out here is the is the uh, velocity in terms of per grain of powder. So it's just the velocity divided by the charge weight. So that's why that number exists in case you guys are wondering. And and I kind of do it that way. Just it, 
it's a good visual representation, <clears throat> good visual representation of something along the lines of like this, right? Where I came back and with the McGuire ballistics, I tested the, uh, I tested the, um, the bullet with Superformance, which this is, I think, the second best velocity option that Barnes has listed. I think Stayball 6.5 is the best, and then Superformance is right under it. And and so you can see here, and at first glance, like I sent this info to my buddy, and he was like, well, H4350 did, you know, looks like Superformance didn't really outperform it, which, yeah, if you just look at the numbers, it doesn't look that way, but you got to keep in mind, this is staying within the manual uh, charge weights, right? What's listed in the Barnes manual. This is going 1.6 grains above their listed maximum, which I don't recommend at all. So <clears throat> you can definitely see like their max would, would have been 40.4, which is 40.5, but you can kind of get the idea. So roughly 2650 probably. Um, and then over here, maybe 26, you know, 70, something like that. That would be where we would be with uh, if we just stopped with H4350, well, you can clearly see big difference, right? 2781, 45 grains, I believe, is the max charge that they have listed in their manual. So, yeah, definitely, you know, over 100 feet per second improvement just by using a, a different powder, right? So, to push the velocity, I would probably go with something like Superformance or Stayball 6.5, which I will test. I'll test probably several powders uh, with this particular bullet, just checking accuracy. Also with the Barnes, the 127 LRX. I think I've got three boxes of those. So you can see my overall length. You know, it's a hundred thousandths difference. I was loading the Barnes at the uh, recommended overall length of 2.75. The McGuire Ballistics, I had to load at 2.650. Uh, my jam point is 2.68, so I backed off 30. Uh, from jam and that's what I started with. I could load it slightly longer probably uh, if I really wanted to, but I didn't see any pressure signs um, with the McGuire ballistics. I did start to see, you know, slight pressure signs over here with the barns. I started to flatten some of the primers. Uh, I did crater a couple of primers, but it, I just decided, you know what, I'm not gonna shoot this hot with H4350 anyway. Like, I, I mean, if I'm really trying to chase velocity, and I want to maximize that, then I'll just use a powder that's better suited for that. There's no point in uh, trying to push a powder and, and you kind of cross over into territory that's just not the safest thing in the world to do. So, so that's it. Um, I did have that oddball, you know, at 43.5 where it did spike up to 27.44 on the velocity and that, I just kind of highlighted that. I mean, I like to go back and look, and uh, you obviously can tell just by looking at it, hey, yes, that's obviously kind of weird, and it the velocity did shoot up for whatever reason, but then, of course, you break it down, velocity per grain, and you can you just get a better visual representation of like, yeah, that is definitely out of family, not exactly sure what's going on there, just some an anomaly, but it's out of family compared to everything else, so... But that's it. That is the velocity performance slash checking for pressure. Um, and, and I didn't have any pressure issues with Superformance uh, within those charge weight ranges that I tested. It was only H4350 and only when I got up, you know, here on the sort of way over the, uh, the manual max charge. So, all right. That's it. Now it's time to go back. Well, now I've got to decide as far as testing goes uh, for accuracy. You know, I've got to, got to decide on a charge weight range. Uh, you know, I definitely don't want to be down in the 2500s. Uh, I think somewhere somewhere between uh, this, you know, 39.9 and the 40.5, 40.8 range probably. I don't mind going slightly above their max because, again, I didn't see any pressure signs, so there was nothing that was really concerning until I got, you know, down close to the 42 grain range. So I think as long as I back off of that a decent amount, stay away from that area, I should be good. So that'll be the plan uh, for H4350 for Superformance. Uh, probably going to live somewhere uh, if you know, on the higher end, because again, that would be the reason to, to shoot this powder is to get better velocity performance uh, within the manual 
charge weight range. So, and then I also need to test Stay Ball 6.5. I've got that powder and a few others that I can test. So more to follow, but yeah, really good stuff so far. Um, I think this is going to be an awesome bullet and I can't wait to hurry up, get it loaded, at least get some level of accuracy testing done. I mean, I'm not going to nail down a super awesome load. I, I want to go shoot this thing now in the field, right? So it's going to be uh, slightly condensed and expedited, but I'll be doing a ton of load development with this stuff, not only in the 6.5 Creedmoor, but also in 270 Winchester and 30 TC. So you guys just be on the lookout for all that. But all right, that's it. That's where we're going to leave it. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Hopefully this gives you some uh, I guess baseline of understanding of, you know, two different velocity option powders, you know, H4350 on the slow end, super performance on the high end, kind of what I'm seeing. I remember this is a Kimber 84M Hunter, so I think it's got a 22 inch barrel. I can't remember. I need to double check that, but that's it. That's where I'm going to leave it. Hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for a whole lot more videos on this stuff. So we'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.